So the legend of the witch is... Good morning guys! I'm off on a little adventure today. You see I got something different in the back of the van here. I have a bike. I'll tell you why I have that in a sec. So the question you may be asking is why do I have a bike and where am I going? Well my brother, if you guys don't know I have a brother, um, and his wife and his two sons, my nephews Alex and Zach, are camping right now at Jellystone in Grayling, Michigan. So now the thing about this Jellystone in Grayling, Michigan is it just happens to be about a 15 minute bike ride from Pear Shaney Cemetery. Now I'll tell you more guys more about Pear Shaney um, when I get there but it used to be a town in the Roscommon County in Michigan um, that had some very unfortunate things happen to it and it is now a ghost town. The only thing left of the ghost town is a cemetery. So we're gonna go there. So I'm going to catch up with you guys once I get to Grayling and get to the Jellystone. Okay guys, I am in Pear Shaney Cemetery. I'm a little red. I should have been smarter and put my hat on, but I didn't. Lesson learned. Anyways, I've just been sitting under this tree in the shade after biking here, cooling off. Anyway, so you might be wondering, what is Pear Shaney and why did I drive all the way to Grayling to come here? Well, for one, I didn't come all the great way to Grayling just for Pear Shaney. My brother is camping here, so I came to visit them for the day. But what about this little place called Pear Shaney? So Pear Shaney was established around the 1870s by lumberjacks, actually. Um, by the later 1870s, there was about population about 1,500 people. They had like mills here and a store and just a cute little town um, and then some unfortunate things started to happen here uh, diphtheria came through the village wiping out almost the majority of the population then after diphtheria the town got hit with several fires that pretty much burnt everything to the ground and then after the fires there was more disease so needless to say day after multiple bouts of fire and disease by about 1917 this place was pretty much abandoned and it became a ghost town what brings me to this cemetery specifically well for one this is the only thing left of pear shaney um there are no more structures i'm pretty sure they said vandals have pretty much destroyed everything that was left of this town um so there's just this cemetery left and unfortunately they've gotten to some of the headstones here too but there's some weird legends that go around with this cemetery there is the legend of the witch so the legend of the witch is apparently there was a witch who was banned to the forest um my bike just fell over so apparently this witch was banned to the woods away from the village and eventually i don't know why but she was hung from the oak tree in the cemetery, which I'm going to assume is this tree right here, because really that's the only big oak tree I see. And after she was hung from the tree, she was buried underneath the tree. Now, do I believe that this woman was a witch? 
no. Do I believe that this woman was probably somebody who maybe had a child out of wedlock and then everybody called her a witch? Probably. But anyways, so lots of people blame the witch for all the atrocities that happened to the town, like all the disease outbreaks and the fires, even though there's definitely some logical explanation for those. But needless to say, this cemetery is a paranormal hotspot here in the Ross Common area. Um, people have said that they've heard children laughing. They've seen um, children's handprints on their vehicles while they've been parked in the little dirt parking lot that's over there. Of course, people say that they see apparitions, they see orbs, they hear voices, lots of other things. I've been sitting under this tree for a good little while. I haven't heard anything except for the wind and a lot of bugs, <laughs> but that's about it. Um, the weird thing about Pear Shaney is nothing will grow here, it says. Like, if you notice here in the cemetery, most of these trees are dead. They say the only thing that will grow here is a weird moss, which I did see a little bit coming in on the trails. Now, if you're wanting to come in to explore Parashaney Cemetery, the road here is not vehicle friendly. Unless you have a lifted four wheel drive, don't bring your vehicle in here. That's why I brought my bike and even the bike wasn't good because the majority of the trails to get into here are really loose sand, which wasn't really good for the cruiser bike that I have. So that was an interesting getting here. But again, if you want to come tour Pear Shaney has Cemetery, make sure you have a truck. Now this is an operating cemetery. The township around here um, keeps it up, cuts the grass. Be respectful when you come here. Don't come here and mess with the graves. Don't come here and uh, take any of the decorations or the, or the tributes left on the graves. Leave the headstones alone. Just be respectful. It's a cemetery. Like I said, I'm always respectful when I go to cemeteries. I don't step on people's graves. I don't leave anything behind. So be respectful of what's here. I love that somebody came here and put um, American flags on most of the graves because tomorrow is the 4th of July. So it's nice to see people are coming here and remembering the people here in the cemetery. There are the cemetery rules. I didn't bring Charles with me today because I was on the bike. So you see, Pershaney Cemetery is open 9 a.m. till sunset. There's history on the town. George Shaney received a land grant from Michigan Central Railroad to establish a small town as a stopping point between Gaylord and Jackson. Fifty families parish in Pear Shaney are buried here in the Pear Shaney Cemetery. And here they have names of the families that are in here. They did say that there was some unknown graves, some children graves. Most of these headstones don't even have names on them anymore. people are coming here and leaving rocks on the graves this just says dear mother so weird that all the trees in the cemetery are dead I, I don't know why. So if you look at the Pear Cheney area on Google Maps, I'll show it right here. It almost looks like diamond plated forest. Like there's forest and there's little diamond holes, as you can see here throughout the area. I don't know why it's like that. I don't know if it's from the town or what, but it looks pretty cool from Google Maps. Thank you. 
so that's the extent of Parashini. It's not very big, not too many headstones. I think I'm just going to sit and cool off a little bit. See if I hear any sounds. I'll let you guys know if I do. And then I'm going to head back to Jellystone. I think when I get back to Jellystone, I'm definitely going to take advantage of their pool if it's not too busy. Well, guys, I'm taking the easy way out. This is not my bike. This is my mother's bike. And I'm quite a bit taller than my mother. And this is set to her height, which her legs are considerably shorter than mine, which made it very difficult to pedal this bike. Um, and I have no idea how to adjust the seat. So my brother is just five minutes away at the campsite and he has a truck. So I said, hey, Jay, why don't you come for a ride to the cemetery, throw the bike in the back, and then we'll drive the truck back. Well, guys, I'm back at home now. Super quick video today, just checking out Parashini Cemetery. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos because we're heading to one of my favorite places in the world, Brimley State Park, for eight nights we're going to be there. And I'm going to bring you along for every day and show you what we do when we're camping in our travel trailer. So stay tuned for those videos. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, and most importantly, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you at camp. Bye.